Okay, so you can see I got the Jaguar flywheel off of the engine block there. And just to kind of give you a, a quick refresher on, on what this drivetrain plan is that I came up with a while ago. is So, I originally got the Jaguar engine, not this one, but the other one I got, you know, probably almost two years ago now. And I got it, it didn't have the bell housing or flywheel or anything, anything from what you see right there back. Um, and so I adapted it to this um, Chevy T5 transmission back here. So this is a nice transmission from like the mid 80s, came in a lot of S10 pickups, five speed with overdrive, much nicer than the, the early four speed crash box transmissions. So I adapted that together with some custom adapter plates here. So the way it was supposed to go was Jaguar engine, this custom adapter plate to go to actually a flathead Ford bell housing and this flathead Ford flywheel with new pressure plate, I machined the back of it to actually fit the Jack Jaguar crankshaft and machine a new bolt pattern in it as well for that to fit against there. So that then essentially the back of the engine becomes a flathead Ford um, V8. And the purpose of that was because then it's really easy to go to the T5 transmission because that's a very popular conversion right there from the, the flathead to the, the T5 transmission. So I was able to just get to buy like off the shelf all my throwout bearings and adapter sleeves and stuff like that that I would need. Uh, after getting this though, I'm changing gears a little bit. I'm still keeping the same transmission and everything, but I'm going to actually use the Jaguar flywheel instead of the Ford flywheel there. And that's really for a couple reasons. Number one, I mean, this flywheel is meant for that engine. Um, it, it fits much more tightly on the crankshaft there. The, the Jaguar flywheel here is definitely a much better quality product here than the, the Ford flathead cast flywheel, which literally has like visible porosity throughout the casting there. And so I'm gonna go with this. And that, that means I pretty much have to just drill a new bolt pattern in for the, the Ford pressure plate there, because I'm still gonna be using that. And I'll be able to use then the Jaguar starter too. And even though I did buy this nice brand new Ford starter in anticipation of using the Ford flywheel, but I think this is the better move. So I'm starting out here just by transferring over the bolt hole circle size from the, the Ford flywheel to this Jaguar flywheel here. And you can see I'm just scribing the, the circle around the face of it there. Then once I did that, I'll take my pressure plate, lay it over top and mark the positions around that circle where I need to drill my holes. And I also should have mentioned that part of the process of determining if I was going to use the Jaguar flywheel was measuring the distance between the face of the, where the crankshaft mounts to the flywheel and to the top face of the flywheel itself where um, the clutch plate sits. Because if that distance was way off, then it wouldn't, things wouldn't line up the way I designed it for with the rest of the, the adapters and things. So I measured that distance and it turned out that the, the Jaguar flywheel was about 60 thousandths of an inch thicker than the Ford flywheel. And I determined that that little amount wasn't that, wasn't that significant. The clutch link itself is adjustable, so any, any small variations like that um, could be taken out in adjustment if I had to. And so that wouldn't be a problem using this flywheel. And so one of the perks of having the original bell housing now is I can use that as a pattern to, to mark the location of the starter. So you can see I'm using a little transfer punch there that I made to mark the original holes of the starter mount. And you can see when I flip this over that those holes don't really line up too well. They're, one of them's very close to the edge and one of them's very close to another hole in that adapter. But that doesn't matter because I'm only using these locations to mark the center of the starter so I know where to, to machine out the main bore 
for the starter to mount. And then I'll adjust the bolt holes uh, slightly later for them to line up someplace that's more convenient. Now that I got the center board machined out, I can line it up on the engine and also line up the starter here. And so now I'm rotating the starter to a position where the, the mounting holes for that line up nicely, marking the position so I can remember where it is. And now you can see it's rotated slightly from where those two original holes were. And that's just so that it lines up better where there's more material on this adapter plate. All right, so I've got my flywheel here. You can see I took it to a local machine shop to get it resurfaced. That's why it's looking so nice and shiny now, but uh, the bolt pattern for the new pressure plate is really good, lines up nicely. This is the pilot bearing um, to locate the input shaft of the transmission um, on the engine here. And this was designed to press fit directly into the middle of the um, Ford Flathead V8 flywheel. But obviously there's a little bit more room here that's not going to work. So the next thing I'm going to do is make an adapter that lets this press into the flywheel. Okay, so here's the final piece that I have come up with here. This is designed to be a press fit into the flywheel and into the bearing. But there's a couple uh, key features um, that I also included here. So you can see on the, on the flywheel here, there's this chamfered edge on both sides there. So what I did on my adapter here was I left this little knife edge. You can kind of see around the edge there. So there's that little knife edge that's bigger than the actual diameter 
of the press fit. And so this will press in from the back of the flywheel and then this little knife, knife edge will set right into that chamfer on the back side there. And then the bearing presses in from the back of the bushing up against this little lip on the inside diameter of the adapter here. So that means that I'm not entirely relying on just the press fits. Even if the press fits fail, both the bearing and the adapter are still fully constrained inside um, the, the flywheel and of course up against the crankshaft on the backside. So it'll be impossible for these parts to fall out. One of the small problems I ran into here when I wanted to fit the flywheel back on is that it actually interfered with the part of that adapter plate right around the starter there. So I just had to take this back over to, mil to the mill and machine away some, some of the aluminum there to make clearance for it. So here what I'm doing is I'm giving the flywheel a, a spin on the shaft here and then I'm marking the point where it settles each time to see if there is a heavy spot to it. And it definitely did and I wanted to make some attempt to try to balance this before I put it back onto the engine. Okay, so I took off the pressure plate just to check the balance of the, the flywheel itself. And the flywheel did have, it seemed like it was the flywheel itself that had a heavy spot around this side because it was still drifting um, to there. So you can see obviously I have my um, pressure plate bolts in here right now and to try to balance it I just added a couple washers like this to the, the lighter side of the flywheel and now like if I put it in a position like it is, it is so close right now. I mean I think this is pretty much as perfect as I'm going to get it with this sort of setup. Of course anything I'm going to do here is not as good as like a professional um, dynamic balancing, which is what I would do if this was like the final assembly of everything. But I'm just trying to get the car to move. Uh, but but boy, this is super super. I mean, like this is basically perfect. Like I move in the position and it it doesn't move at all, no matter where I set it. So that's looking fantastic. I'm gonna put the pressure plate back on and I'll fiddle around with this for a while more just to try to get as close as I can. Um, but you get the gist of it. It's going to be good enough for what I needed to do. While we were trying to install the engine for the first time here, we found out that the starter gear there interfered with part of the bell housing, just barely. So it was enough that just a little bit of carving away with the die grinder there gave enough clearance for us to reassemble that.
っちゃった。Since I started this project, and now for the first time ever, it has a running engine mounted in it. So things are really going to start to get exciting here now.、Uh, in the next video, we have a couple little things to knock off the list before we can try to take it for its first drive, but that'll happen in the next video. So definitely stay tuned and thank you for watching.